welcome everybody to our final open house that is going to be focused on the Ahana student experience on campus. Um, I'm going to introduce myself as moderator of this evening, and then I'm just going to move through some quick facts that you should know and just the logistics of the night, and then I'll hand it off to our lovely panelists for the evening. Um, so first and foremost, my name is Aiden Henderson. I'm a current senior in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. My hometown is actually right here in Newton, Massachusetts. Uh, I live about five minutes away from BC, um, and I'm studying environmental sociology. Um, so at an event tonight that's geared towards the Ahana experience, a good place to start would probably be, what does Ahana mean? Um, so on campus, we love to put acronyms to things. So Ahana is the acronym that we use as sort of an umbrella term to encompass students of color on campus. So it stands for African, Hispanic, Asian, and Native American, um, and we'll often attach a plus at the end to it to encompass the inter intersectionality of experiences here and people who may not fit cleanly into one category, but still identify as a student of color. Um, so as I mentioned, this student is the last, or not the student, this session is the last one that's gonna be geared towards Ahana experience. But if you want to rewatch previous ones or this one after tonight, these are all going to be recorded and posted onto the Discover Boston College page, which is the website that you use to register for this event tonight. Um, I also just want to touch briefly on the fact that we are in the midst of a pandemic. So I want to give all of you huge kudos for enduring the college application process, especially during this unprecedented time. I know it's hard during usual times and I can't imagine what it must be like now. Um, so kudos to you guys. If you guys ever need anything or think that we at the student or we at the admissions program can be of any help, feel free to shoot us an email and we'll do the best that we can. Um, so basically how tonight's gonna go, the chat has actually been turned off, but there is a and A box. And so this is where you're gonna ask your questions. And throughout the night, you can even start now, just toss a question in there. You can do it anonymously. You can do it as yourself um, and we'll, we'll touch upon them. And this, you're really in the driver's seat for this event tonight. And so whatever you want to know, um, we'll be happy to touch upon. We have some amazing uh, faculty from the actual admissions office that are going to be moderating questions in the chat. So they'll get back to you if there's something that we can't answer, but we're really here for you guys. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists to introduce themselves. So Lubens is first. Hello, hello. My name is Lubens Benjamin. I am a sophomore at Boston College concentrating in marketing in the Carroll School of Management and also have a minor in philosophy in the Morrissey College of Arts and Science. And I'm originally from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I want to talk about a particular formative experience I had during my freshman year at BC, um, which is my time in the Compass Mentoring Program. Um, this is one of many first year mentor programs available for incoming freshmen. This one is geared towards AHANA students. Um, it starts off with a retreat up in New Hampshire. You and about 50, 60 or so other uh, first year students go there. Um, you have about 20 or so ju junior, senior mentors, and you also have a few faculty that go on the trip. And it's a overnight trip so you have a one day where you really get to bond and like really get to know people you may not have not known otherwise if you didn't do the experience um and later on you're broken down into these small groups that meet for the rest of your first semester um at boston college and it's within these small groups that formed so many close friendships um with, with people who went on the trip and people within my own small groups i remember going down um to my leader josh's uh suite on lower campus and like those walk down with the rest of my group mates for some of the funnest times. Um, we'd always stop by uh, Mac and grab a few mozzarella sticks before we go. And when we got there, we were able to talk about our week, um, our highs and lows, um, what we were looking forward to the, so the semester, um, what classes I should take next semester. So those are really nice tools to have coming in as a freshman. Thanks, Lubins. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ikram Ali, and I'm a current junior originally from San Antonio, Texas. I'm double majoring in English and Communications in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences, and I'm also minoring in Marketing in the Carroll School of Management. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about one of my favorite extracurricular activities here at BC, and that definitely has to be my involvement with The Heights, which is BC's independent student newspaper. I joined The Heights early on my freshman year through something called the Heights Introductory Program, and it was a mentorship program geared towards freshmen and sophomores to kind of help us navigate 
navigate our first couple semesters at BC while also learning about the ins and outs of producing the school paper. Um, my role as a photographer on the Heights really impacted how my freshman year went. I went to so many events that I wouldn't have gone to on my own and experienced things that I probably wouldn't have if I didn't have to go and take photos at the events. It's, it was really cool being able to meet other upperclassmen who are, a lot of them are also communications and English majors and kind of getting tips and tricks on like what classes to take and what professors, but then also being to explore something that I'm passionate about and getting to know both the campus and exploring Boston as well. And it was definitely one of the key formative experiences of my freshman year. Awesome, thank you, Ikram. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Lozano. I am a sophomore here. I'm studying Applied Psychology and Human Development in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development with a double major in Political Science in the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences. And I'm originally from Orlando, Florida. So I kind of want to combine uh, an academic slash extracurricular experience that I'm a part of right now, which is a research opportunity um, with a professor in the Lynch School of Education. This is Professor Brinton Likes. Uh, it's something I actually just got involved in over the summer, but it's something I'm looking forward to so much. I think when I thought of research, I thought of it basically just focused around STEM majors. Um, but the fact that I, as a humanities major, have been able to get involved and pretty quickly has been really amazing. Uh, my research is something I'm super interested in is working with immigrants, specifically immigrants from Guatemala, and how they have assimilated um, into the greater Boston community. And the idea of this research is to focus on what action steps our community can take to help that process and help immigrants. Um, so I think what's really amazing overall is building a relationship with my professor first and foremost. Um, she's a great resource academically in the applied psychology program and also just a great mentor to kind of talk to and check in with on a weekly basis and i'd say that's very true of a lot of professors on campus whether or not you're taking um, opportunities of research that they are offering but beyond that just being able to kind of combine my academic interests with kind of my interest beyond um, just like my schoolwork or coursework has been really amazing overall and i know research is an opportunity that students freshman year through senior year have and are able to take advantage of overall. Thanks, Jen. Hi, uh, I'm Billy Sue. I'm the Vice Provost for Faculties at Boston College, which is just an academic title that we give to somebody who sort of oversees the human resource aspect of faculty hiring. Uh, I'm also a professor in the Carroll School of Management. I teach uh, intermediate accounting. Uh, this is my 31st year here at Boston College. Uh, it was my first job out of uh, graduate school. I never left, you know, love the place. Uh, I'm extremely proud of our faculty hiring in four of the last five years, you know, we've hired the most number of AHANA faculty. So, so that's always been one of our goals that we increase the diversity of the faculty here. And, and that's just, you know, really high up on the list of the things that, you know, I, you know I'm very proud of. So glad to be a part of this panel. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Um, so basically, the night is yours now. Um, you can ask whatever question you want. You can toss it in the chat box. You don't have to be shy. You can ask more than one question. Um, and I want to touch upon that while we are all Ahana students and administrator, um, we are always more than happy to talk about anything about the experience of being at Boston College or college in general, um, because we really live every aspect of that experience too. Um, and just along that line, I guess I'm going to start off with more of a fun question while we wait for more of these to kind of roll in. Um, and I also did realize that I admitted my pronouns for my introduction. So I'm going to ask all of our panelists to ask this or answer this question, just start off with your pronouns, and then you can toss out your answer. So the question is, what is your favorite food to eat at or around Boston College campus? Um, I'll start. So I use he, him, his pronouns and my favorite food to eat is actually about a five minute walk from the Newton campus, which is where 40% of the freshman class will live. Um, and it's a burrito restaurant called Tango Mango. As I, as I mentioned, I grew up in Newton, Massachusetts. So I've been going there since I was in kindergarten. I kind of friends with the owner because I, there was a point in high school when I will admit I went there like three or four times a week, but it's an amazing, it's an amazing place. If you're ever in the area, check them out. Great burritos. Yeah. I can go ahead. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And 
my favorite place to eat is actually Stewart Dining Hall, uh, which happens to be on the Newton campus, which is at freshman campus. I lived there my freshman year. And I actually, even as a sophomore, did make the trip back to Newton campus this weekend to have the West Coast Panini, which is my favorite meal on campus. Um, and it just also made me feel like back at home, but it's a great sandwich, uh, chicken, avocado, tomato, brie, just all you need. And it just feels very homey and hearty. Um, so that is definitely a go-to. I can go next. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I think definitely my favorite thing to eat on campus are the chicken pesto pressers from Eagles. I haven't been there yet this year, but I one of my friends went last week and she had it and I was so jealous and I need to make the trek out onto campus. Even though I don't have a meal plan this year, I would spend my own money to eat the to eat those pressers. I'll go next. Um, my pronouns are he, him, his. And when it comes to the food, I think I always have a difficult time because I love the breakfast. Um, I feel like, and the bakery. Um, I love the donuts, the muffins, the croissants, like any bakery that BC has, like I'll eat it, like no hesitation. Um, but also I think breakfast is probably my favorite meal of the day in general. And so, and BC does a really good job with breakfast between the home fries, the English muffin sandwiches, the bagel, uh, cheese, and egg. Um, so yeah, I think those are my favorite foods on campus. So my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I have to say my favorite dish is uh, the clam chowder. You know, I have it at football games, you know, and when they have it available in lower, oh my gosh, it's, it's better than legal seafood, so. Yeah, so thank you. Um, so we have some questions rolling in. Before we move forward, I just want to clarify something. So as a HANA, or what a HANA is, is it's an acronym that we do use as an umbrella term, but in of itself, it's not actually a campus organization. So there are a HANA cultural organizations and there is a HANA leadership organizations on campus and different resources that cater specifically towards the HANA experience. But a HANA itself is not something that you join. It's more of like a self-identified thing that you identifies an Ahana student and you maybe are going to dive into some cultural organizations, which can be anything from a Korean student association to black student forum to the Ahana leadership council. Um, it really is more of an umbrella thing on campus and it's not something that you have to apply to or join. It's more if, if you identify as a student of color, you can be uh, your Ahana and you can go do whatever you want with that. Um, but along a different line, Paul is wondering, what is your favorite part of campus and what are some attractions nearby? I'd say for me, uh, my favorite part of campus is Linden Lane. It's definitely my favorite spot um, to visit. And so Linden Lane is kind of that main entryway into um, kind of the hub main campus. And it's this kind of just long road, but it faces Gaston Hall, which is that like, center building, our oldest building on campus. For me, there's just a lot of meaningful aspects to it, uh, first of all. Every day, freshman year, just walking off of the bus, that'd be the walk I'd take to my classes. I'd usually either call my mom or like my parents at home, take advantage of that walk um, or just like talk to friends and catch up with them. But beyond that, there are a lot of traditions that kind of surround Linden Lane, which are really, really exciting. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about some at some point, but just one of my favorites is in freshman year, the first year academic convocation, a walk you do with your class and senior year, there's actually a senior walk that's pretty similar. So very symbolic of the start and end of your four years around that linen lane. I think definitely for me, my favorite spots on campus are the is the academic quad, especially now when it's like still really nice out. A lot of times, even I have like some online classes, but I'll go to campus and I'll just sit out on the quad and take my class from outside. And it's really nice to just have like that kind of traditional college experience where there are just people sitting out on the quad. There are people playing spike ball. There are people doing homework and some people taking their classes out. And it's just a fun environment to be a part of. Awesome. Um, so Ava is wondering, what are the typical class sizes at BC? Um, maybe we can have one student pitch in and Billy can also hop on this also from a perspective or the perspective of, of a professor. Yeah, so um, most BC classes are around the 27 person range. Um, and there aren't too many big lecture classes that you will take a lot of classes um, are on the smaller end. But if a class is um, say above 60 students, 
Um, it's automatically broken down into smaller discussion groups where you can go over course material um, and really get a more hands-on approach with the work. Um, I have taken one major, like a big lecture class called Econ, Principles of Econ. Um, and even then the, the professor does a great job of trying to learn everyone's name and really trying to get to know students. Um, I think that's one thing that kind of sets BC apart, the, the way faculty love to go out and reach out to students um, to get to know them. And I feel like that's usually their favorite part of teaching. Yeah, I just want to add that a lot of it also depends on what your major is. Uh, with some of the majors, the, the class sizes are very small, they're seminars, so you're really in a small intimate classroom. In fact, you know, one of our major academic buildings, you know, Stokes has a lot of these small size classrooms, and it was built precisely to accommodate these smaller uh, seminar rooms. Uh, in the official calculation of the faculty to student ratio, uh, I think the official ratio is something like 11.2. So it's, it's really not that high. Uh, obviously, you're, you're, you, know, you're, you might get into a bigger classroom if you're uh, hitting some of those general you know, principles of economics, uh, foundations of finance. So, so some of those classes can get large. But uh, as Lewin mentioned, you know, a lot of it is also broken down into smaller discussion sessions. So it, does, it doesn't really quite feel like you know, those large public university types of classes that are two to 300 uh, student size. Awesome, thank you. Um, Lorenzo is wondering about opportunities to bond and socialize with for uh, specifically Latinx students. Um, so if anybody is able to talk about any culture clubs along those lines. Yeah, absolutely. I am actually a part of the Organization of Latin American Affairs. Um, so big organization kind of encompassing a lot of Latinx students. Um, they host different programs, um, work with other culture groups as well. We have a multitude of different culture groups on campus. Um, OLA, which is kind of the acronym for the Organization of Latin American Affairs, also has um, amazing dance groups where they're just insane to watch and perform. Um, and there's definitely a lot of pride around that. Um, they participate in kind of culture fairs, which is really cool to kind of see whether it's uh, food being displayed or kind of shared with the community or whether it's uh, hosting movies or panels or things like that. There's definitely a lot of opportunities there. And I would just add on um, sort of the way people come out and support organizations like Ola. I know I went to the culture show last year and I had an amazing time. Um, and like the tons of events they put on, people drive out in numbers to go see them, um, especially the dance organizations, um, Fuego, like we all love to see them. We all love to see them dance. So um, yeah, it's a really big part of BC culture going on supporting these culture groups. Awesome, thank you. Um, we have a couple questions about social justice opportunities on campus. Um, more specifically, Cam is wondering what social justice initiatives are there on campus? And an anonymous attendee is also wondering how are students involved in social justice work? Um, there are a lot of different clubs and organizations on campus that like that try to tackle um, social injustice issues. Um, one of them being FACES, um, the anti-race, it's like anti-racism club at Boston College. So they'll put on events like, appro like what's appropriate to wear to, for, to Halloween and what's not appropriate to wear to Halloween or um, how to be an ally, um, things like that to try and educate um, students and help us move further along um, in our social justice causes. So FACES puts on a lot of amazing events. I know there are a lot of, ton there are tons of other um, organizations that do similar things. Yeah, I'm just just to add, I think a lot of that is like a lot of student organization and like there are a lot of clubs on campus that students are part of like one thing that I'm thinking of is like there's a club called Charity Water, where a lot of students are kind of involved in that and helping to provide like water to places where it's a scar scarce resource. And then also there's like an environmental club on campus and they also organize a lot of protests and like get people together so we can, so they can go to protests in the city of Boston. And so a lot of it is a lot of organizing and making sure that students on campus are aware of all these issues that are going around so people can learn more about it. Yeah, um, and kind of from the other end of the, or the other side of the table, I was wondering, Billy, if you could talk about more so how faculty incorporate social justice initiatives into your curriculum and maybe even as you're in your role as an administrator as well. 
Absolutely. You know, one of the trademark courses that BC offers, of course, is Pulse, uh, which is basically a class where a required component of the class is to have students to go out to the community and, you know, integrate themselves and help uh, the community that they're working in. A lot of these are volunteer organizations, not for profits. Uh, and it's not surprisingly one of the most popular classes offered in the university. It fills up really quickly. And that just to me shows how you know, invested the students are in being a part of the community and coming up with solutions to help them. So, so that's one part. And then on top of that, we also have this new core uh, which offers a bunch of different courses that touch on this topic. So there are these complex, you know, what we call complex problems and enduring questions types of classes. And what these classes are is basically they have uh, faculty from different disciplines coming together to address, you know, a very important question. Uh, sometimes it might involve, you know, how to uh, provide clean water and providing it not only from the environment, env envir excuse me, environmental studies, uh, department perspective, but also from the history department perspective. So I don't know if any of the students here have taken it, but you know, by all accounts, it's once again a very successful and really a very distinctive type of course. It's not the traditional, you know, just philosophy or just theology. It combines different fields and allows students to really address uh, very important questions. Yeah, thank you, Bill. Yeah, so Pulse is an amazing program. One of the hundreds, I'd say, of service opportunities on campus. Um, along these social justice lines, we also have a question about Black Lives Matter, which I'm just going to touch upon really quickly. Um, but outside of the student admissions program, I'm also one of the co-presidents of the Black Student Forum. And so a lot of my work over the summer was involved with working with administrators and other students to kind of serve the needs of Black students on campus, especially with regards to the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and what I will say is through my years at BC, um, administrators and faculty and students on campus have been very supportive of different things that have been going on within the Black Lives Matter movement and other social justice uh, things on campus. And so a couple of things that we've been working on was I got reached out to by a couple of the vice presidents within administra administration um, that, who wanted to work with the Black Student Forum to help put forth these initiatives that they're going to be working for or working towards this fall and spring and for the future. And so they were very receptive to anything that we asked for. We kind of garnered um, quite like we asked, we asked what the greater black community wanted and we proposed them to them and they embraced and worked with what they could. Um, so in response to that, they're coming out with the Boston College Forum on Racial Justice, which is going to be head by or headed by Dean Vincent Rougeau, who is the, uh, the dean of the BC Law School. Um, and that along with just other smaller changes that are gonna kind of have an effect on how BC handles these things in the long run, ranging from like uh, like revamping its core curriculum to like more resources on campus. So I'd say throughout like throughout the way, they've been very supportive. Um, next question, next question. Anonymous attendee is wondering, what do you do for fun on the weekends? There's definitely a bunch of options. Um, I think I have been taking advantage of being back in Boston and going into the city, which is not something I really was able to do as much at home. Um, what's amazing is we have a bunch of public transportation. So the T is what we call the Massachusetts transportation system. We have so many stops around campus. Um, it takes about maybe 35 to 40 minutes to get into the city of Boston. Um, and it's super accessible for students. And so uh, this past weekend, my friends and I went out to dinner on Friday night, and it's nice because we get to sit outside. Um, definitely social di socially distant dining is still a thing here. Um, so it's nice to know that we can get off campus, enjoy kind of some form of experience off campus and in the city of Boston, but also um, there's still a bunch of opportunities on campus um, for students that just want to stay on as well. And I'd add that usually there's always some sort of event going on on campus, like Jen was mentioning. Um, there might be a, a play to catch, there might be a swimming event to catch another day. Um, I personally love going to Red Sox games. That's kind of my bread and butter. Um, so pre-COVID, I did a lot of that. Um, you get discount tickets and there are a lot of places in the city um, you get discounts to because you are a college student. So the aquarium, the museum, all these places you can go 
almost virtually for free. I know Red Sox games are $9, so I go there all the time. I even went to catch a Red Sox Yankees game. And that's kind of like a staple um, Boston experience that like you, got, you just have to experience because the energy in the in Fenway Park is just electric. Um, so yeah, those are, those are some of my favorite things to do on the weekends. Awesome. Um, Aaron is wondering if you could guarantee one aspect of Boston College to every prospective student, what would it be and why? I would say like you're going to meet at least at least one, probably at least 50 people who just like really, really care about you that um, like you like that's something I was cut off by when I first came here, just kind of like how open and receptive everyone is um, from faculty to students. Um, I had this one professor, Professor Ryan Heffernan, he teaches Kurt Chanel, which is a course offered to first year students um, that talks about um, just different topics from racism to sexism um, to what's it like to be a, a college freshman. Um, and like, I only knew him for like a week and a half. And then next thing you know, I was in his office talking about like everything, like my highs and my lows and like, how can I like get through this? And he was just there for me and like, we made a plan and we, we went on. So that's not, those are things like I didn't really expect coming to college. I thought it would be more of like, I'm on my own, like I need to get through this. But there have been so many faculty, so many students who have just been there for me. Um, so I think that's almost a guarantee at Boston College. I think also one thing, it's not a 100% guarantee, but from pretty much every single person I've met on campus, I found that it's to be true that you'll find something that you're really, really passionate about, whether it's what you're studying or an extracurricular activity. I think one thing that pretty much all BC students have in common is they have at least one or two things that they really throw their heart and soul at and they're really good at it and it just makes you watching them get so motivated and want to find something that you're also just as passionate about. I think that's something that's really cool about BC that even if you don't have something that you're particularly passionate about before you come, I can guarantee that you'll at least find one thing that can lead to that. Yeah, awesome. And Billy, I'd love to hear what you'd have to say. From yeah, I, I just want to say that I can guarantee you, you're going to be challenged in class. And it'll be more than once. You know, your faculty will push you and, and it might be a very technical subject or it could be something that just forces you to rethink the way you believe the world operates. And, and I think that's one thing you can expect for sure if you come to BC. I think just really quickly with that, I was actually gonna say my thing was you're gonna be challenged. And I think from the student perspective is you're gonna be challenged with the thoughts and ideas that other students bring about in class discussions or just in conversations that you have on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but not in a negative way, not in a way that's trying to change your perspective or your point of view, but trying to broaden it and open it up, which I think has been the coolest experience here. Yeah, thank you. Um, somebody else is wondering if we can just quickly touch upon the sports culture at Boston College, um, which ones are fun to go to, yeah. I think because it's football season right now, we definitely have to talk about that. In a usual year, those football Fridays and Saturdays are some of the funnest times that I've had at BC where everyone goes out and they're tailgating and then we just go to the game and you're cheering. Even if we, if we lose or if we win, there's just such a great energy in that stadium and it's such a fun place to be a part of. And I think especially because BC is a D1 school and there's so many teams that do so well. It's so fun to go and watch your teammates or your roommates go out onto those fields and play. And it's just such a fun experience to be a part of. There's definitely like a big sports culture, I would say at BC. Yeah, I mean, field hockey has also been very, very successful. I mean, that's an impressive team. I think this year they don't look as good as the last couple of years where they were in the finals, but Hey, it's, it's fun, you know, football, field hockey, soccer. If you're a sports nut, I mean, there's, there's plenty to go around. Yeah, I just like to add, like, growing up in Cambridge, Mass, like, Boston College has always been my, like, college sports team. So just, like, like it's, so, it's so much different from watching it from the outside than when you're actually here. Like, once you're here, like, you get so invested in BC sports and BC culture that, like, any, anything they do is like, it's a party. Like you're a part of the football team. Like you're a part of the field hockey team. You're a part of the lacrosse team. Um, basketball is one of my favorite to watch because 
there's a student section that's right there on the court. There's even a few seats um, by courtside that students get to sit by too. Um, so you really get immersed in the games. Yeah, and one thing that I just also have to add is BC has a top tier women's lacrosse team and women's soccer team. Um, the women's lacrosse team is almost consistently, I think out of three out of the four, like for three out of the four of the last years that I've been here has been in the NCAA finals. Um, and women's soccer is also a top tier team as well. And they're both really fun to watch. Um, Lauren is wondering, how would you characterize BC students? Is there one specific quality or characteristic that you find as a commonality amongst all students? Um, yeah. I think overall, um, everyone brings their different experiences, obviously from where they come from and everything, but I will say a commonality that I do see is intentionality, um, both in what students get involved in and also um, in the types of conversations you see, like I was mentioning earlier, outside the classroom, but both inside the classroom. Um, students don't just kind of do things just because they definitely step outside of their comfort zone and try to try different things. But I will say that there is intention with a lot of things that students get involved in, whether that's social justice initiatives, whether that's service, um, or trying to learn and also just grow. Um, and I think that's something that's really, really important and builds up BC culture overall. Um, one thing I always say is that BC makes us students that are activists. Like we're a school full of activist students. Um, students just love to drive out in numbers to um, protest, social justice initiatives, you name it. Like we rally behind these causes and we're really here for them. Um, it's almost like this feeling of like wanting to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And I think you, you can see that whether it's um, the fact that 85% of students participate in service um, during their time at BC, even though it's not required. Um, it's just something that we do. Cause I think once again, like we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Awesome. Yeah. Um, would, anybody, would anybody be able to talk about the experience for students who are transitioning to Boston College from an urban city. Um, does anybody able to talk about that? Yeah, I think I'm from San Antonio, Texas, and I lived in the city. And it's definitely a very different experience coming from a more urban city. And then BC, even though we're called Boston College, we're technically not in the city of Boston. We're in Newton, which is the first suburb west of Boston. And it was definitely an interesting experience, but something I really wanted when I was looking at colleges. I didn't want to be right in the middle of the city. I wanted that experience of being in an enclosed campus and then having the city of Boston right there that's very easily accessible was just an added bonus so you could have that traditional college experience but also have if you're looking for it something else to do on the weekend and something else to explore and it was definitely a bit of an experience changing but honestly it wouldn't change my experience at all it's definitely given me the best of both worlds having that suburban experience but also being able to go into the city whenever you want to yeah thank you and I hope that answered your question if you have anything else you can feel free to reach out to her her email's right there um, or you can also reach out to myself and I can put you into contact with somebody else um, if you'd like. Um, somebody else is wondering what the dorm life is like. Yeah, I can start off with a quick overview. Um, for freshmen, I know we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but when accepted, you're offered either three or four years of on-campus housing. So freshman year, 60% live on upper campus, which is directly adjacent to the main academic campus. The other 40% live on Newton campus, uh, fully self-sufficient uh, satellite campus about a mile and a half away with shuttles running back and forth. Uh, dorms themselves are very communal freshman year. Um, about 95% will live in a traditional double. You can also opt to live in a single, triple or quad as well. Um, single sex floors, um, but um, just very communal overall. I'd say we have lounge spaces, uh, whether that's for quiet study or just kind of group study. Uh, I met most of my closest friends in my freshman year housing, which was amazing, I think, to kind of go back home to friends um, was a really great experience. Um, but just because, let's say, I lived on Newton campus, that didn't leave me completely isolated, definitely made a lot of friends with upper campus kids, um, and that continues kind of throughout your four years. Awesome. Um, Kiara is wondering what aspects of being a HANA make the college experience better? I'd say just the sort of community that we have among 
Ahana students, I think we all recognize each other, we all see each other. And I think there's a certain bond that's there that you don't get elsewhere. Um, like I said, I, was, I did the Compass Mentoring Program and that was amazing. Um, just being in a room full of people of color, um, experiencing them, hearing them, um, celebrating them. So all those different experiences I think add to the Ahana experience. And there's like so many other um, opportunities and things on campus that help elevate the Ahana experience. I think the rest of us could talk about that. Cool. Um, if nobody else has anything to add on that front, um, Martina is wondering, was it hard to meet new people your freshman year and how can you get involved in different groups or organizations? I think definitely one of the best ways to meet people, especially early on your freshman year, is to join different clubs and organizations. And the way that you can do that is every year, the first Friday of classes, there's this thing called the Student Involvement Fair. And in a usual year, all of Stokes Lawn would be filled with tables of the 200 plus clubs all sitting there shouting at you, passing out flyers, trying to get you to sign up for their listservs. This year it was over Zoom and it kind of kind of worked the same way, but it definitely, I don't think it carried on that same experience, but you were still able to join clubs and get to talk with the presidents and the co-presidents and get to know more about what all the clubs that you're interested in were about. And that's definitely, I think, one of the second to like meeting meeting people who you live with in your residence halls i think that's like the second best way you can get to know people especially if you're joining a, joining a club hopefully it's something that you're kind of interested in and you already have that one connection of something that you one that someone else in that club that you're both interested in that same thing and it's definitely a common ground to build a friendship off of and definitely one of the best ways to kind of get involved and get to know more people and upperclassmen on campus Um, I'll just add that like this year on campus, I'm living in the multicultural learning learning experience floor. So it's one of the living learning communities on campus. So basically um, the floor is a certain type of living style. There's healthy living styles. Um, there's Costco, which is an all women's dorm. Um, so yeah, even like that experience, like so basically you're put on the floor of people who want to do or like want to have the same living experience as you. So. Um, this year, I'm mentoring other fresh, uh, other freshmen, the freshmen who live in the freshmen living in the multicultural experience floor on upper campus. Um, so that's been a really fun time. I've been able to connect with them, um, kind of show them the ropes of BC because I know this year is very hard due to COVID um, to initially make those friends. But also, um, your RAs will put on hoots and hows, which is hanging out on Tuesdays or hanging out late on Wednesdays. Um, so yeah, those are really, and those are like programs they put on. So like today I have a hoot and we're doing face masks later and we're going to talk about like how to de-stress during midterm time. So. Yeah, awesome. And I think it's important to remember that freshman year when you're on campus, you're just going to be surrounded by people who also know virtually nobody. And so it's a great time where you're going to form bonds that are going to last with you for the rest of your college experience, at least for me personally. My closest friends I met because I happen to live in a quad, um, which has a bigger dorm than a two person dorm. And my closest friends just knocked on the door because they wanted to see what it looked like. And three years later as a senior, they're still my closest friends. I'm living with one of them. And like, I mean, it's, it's awesome. And everybody's eager to meet new people and form new, uh, like form new friendships. So it's great. Um, Douglas is wondering, I guess this is more of a before COVID hit question, but how often do you travel off campus and explore Boston slash visit other college campuses? I think it really depends on the person. Me specifically, especially last year, I wouldn't go into the city all too often because just because there's so much to do on campus. But I would say on average, maybe two or three times a month, I would go into the city. And I think one thing that's really great about being in the city of Boston is even if you're the only person who came here from your high school, there's so many other schools in Boston that you might know one or two other people from your high school who went who go to other schools. And so it's really fun to go visit their college campuses and pretend to be a student there. I know me and my friends last year, we'd go to Harvard and just like join one of the student tours and just walk around sometimes and pretend that we went to Harvard. And it's just fun to kind of go around and look at all the different college campuses. I'll just say that I feel like a lot of my friends came to me last year, especially for 
during football season because they love to experience like the tailgates and they love to experience uh, like the big um, sports games because I feel like there's not that many other schools in the Boston area that kind of have that big D1 ACC type atmosphere. Um, but I also visit a few friends at BU, a few friends at UNH. So those high school bonds, like you can still have them. You can still connect with your friends in high school no matter where you go. Awesome, thank you. Um, let's see what else. What is it like attending a Catholic institution? Are religious classes required? I can start with this one. I think um, coming from a very large public school in Florida, I was a bit apprehensive, honestly, about the Jesuit Catholic identity. Um, I didn't really know what that meant and I wasn't sure how that would translate. Um, so to the second part of that question then, we do have a theology core requirement. However, that theology core doesn't have to be on Christianity or Catholicism. We offer various classes, um, for example, Hinduism, um, some Asian cultures, Buddhism. Um, one of my friends took uh, is taking a course that compares um, Hinduism to Christianity today, but all of these courses are taught from kind of a secular point of view and just teach you more about different cultures that you may not have known about um, or associated with or anything like that. And so then with that, Although there is that core requirement, you definitely can explore different spiritualities from yours or um, just kind of choose to learn more about yours as well. I think for me, um, what I found that has been most amazing about attending a Jesuit Catholic institution are those Jesuit values that are kind of rooted um, in Catholicism, but don't necessarily always have to associate with them. For example, for me, it's been reflection. Um, reflection, I found that in many courses and also just in my day-to-day -day life, which has been super helpful. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, and specific, or speaking personally, as a Jewish student on campus, I've never once felt like pressure to like attend a mass or something or it's all completely voluntary and it's whatever you want to make of it. Um, outside of that, there is a great multi-faith chapel, which is um, multi-faith center, which is kind of commissioned by campus ministry. And it's a space for student organizations of all faiths and to just go and practice. And it's um, fully supported by campus ministry and they provide what other, what, whatever students may need. And so if you get to campus and you see that or feel like your faith is not represent or being represented, you can always reach out to campus ministry and they'll either connect you with the current student organization that's dedicated towards that or they'll help you form your own, um, which is really great. Um, I guess another thing that I wanna talk about is one of the great parts about being at BC, in my opinion, is the diverse amount or the diverse diversity of the faculty and staff that are actually working on campus. Um, and we're honored to actually have Billy Sue here, who is in charge of more of the hiring process for faculty and staff. So maybe if we could hear you, Billy, talk about the process of BC's commitment to hiring more Ahana faculty of staff, more women staff and faculty on campus. Um, the floor is yours. Sure, happy to discuss this. So first of all, I apologize. My webcam is kind of flickering. So you know, there's this sort of distracting flash that appears from time to time. Anyway. So uh, the percentage of AHANA faculty at Boston College uh, this year is 21%, uh, which is not by itself impressive, but uh, that's a 50% increase from about 10 years ago. Uh, and that might not be a huge increase from people's minds, but you have to realize that faculty don't turn over that quickly, right? With undergrad students, every four years you have a new batch. So you can basically drastically change your student composition by 25% every four years. Uh, with faculty, our faculty, you know, for better or worse, love to stay at Boston College. Their average tenure is closer to like 20 to 30 years. So it takes a while for them to sort of move on and retire or go somewhere else. So with every year that we do hiring, uh, the goal of the university is to approach the diversity of our students. So I think with our students today, it's like 36% was about the AHANA population of uh, the incoming class. Uh, we're about 21% today. So my goal is every year, if we can increase it by 1%, we're gonna get there. Uh, I think the other goal too, is to really sort of diversify the faculty in all the schools. 
Uh, with some schools, you do a better job simply because the pool of potential faculty uh, that are interested in that field are much more diverse. And then we have the harder uh, fields, say in the sciences, for example, or computer science or math. Uh, and with those, we're constantly talking to the department chairs. We hold uh, workshops to ensure that they understand, you know, how this is one of the major strategic goals of the university. That's actually listed on our website. Uh, and so we're holding everyone accountable to, you know, working towards accomplishing those targets. Yeah, thank you. Um, anonymous attendee here is wondering if there's anything specific that made you choose Boston College above your other options. Yeah, that's a great question. And, and I have to tell you, you know, I'm amazed at myself that I've lasted this long. But the interesting thing is that uh, I actually went to a Jesuit high school. Uh, in the Philippines. So that's where I grew up. But at the time I applied to Boston College, I didn't even know it was Jesuit. I mean, that's that's the truth. You know, the, I hate to say this because it'll disclose my age, but at the time the internet was not a big thing, right? I couldn't Google Boston College and find out what it was all about. So it wasn't until I got here that I realized, oh, it's a Jesuit college. And what's amazing to me is how it brought back all those fond memories, you know, the you know, the, this desire to help others, right? Men and women for others is one of the trademark, you know, goals of, of the Jesuits. And, and to me, that really resonates. You know, not only are the students committed to social justice, but the faculty are also interested, committed in helping our students, you know, change themselves to become better citizens of the world. And, and you know, with a lot of our faculty, that really resonates. Uh, when I talk to faculty and I try to describe, okay, you know, what's a typical BC student? What I tell them is, okay, one, they're very smart. They work very hard, but they're also very good people. You know, wait, there, there's not the cutthroat competition that you hear about in other universities where, oh, you know, I can't do better. You know, I have to be better than my classmates. So I'm going to push them down and say bad things about them here. You know, everyone's really working together and trying to support and help one another. You know, and that really resonates with our faculty. They see that, they believe that, and that's why they stay so long, right? So. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we're getting, we're rounding the home stretch right now, but we're gonna try to answer as many of these questions as possible. Um, there have There is a question about racially charged incidents on, camp, incidents on campus. Um, I'm just gonna quickly answer this one in the interest of time, but while they have happened on occasion, I would say that they're definitely not representative of the Boston College campus. I mean, we're a community of nearly 7,200 students living on campus. And while there is an occasion, an occasion where occasionally one student will act out um, in a way that is not in line with BC's values or the BC student body's values, um, the BC students make it known that it's not gonna tolerate any of that. And so, I mean, my freshman year, one of my first experiences on campus was an incident happened and thousands of students, faculty, members of the like, surrounding Newton community organized and just filled the quad and let, the, let people know um, that this is not the type of thing that will be tolerated on Boston College campus. Um, so I hope that answered your question. If you want me to talk about that more in depth or anything, you can feel free to shoot me an email um, and I'd be happy to connect with you. Um, somebody else is wondering, does BC feel like a big campus or a small tight-knit community? I think really quickly I can hit um kind of a mixture of both for sure. Um, we are on like a medium sized institution, like Aiden um, mentioned our size really quickly. We have those aspects of a bigger school with our sports teams and the 300 plus organizations. So definitely like a lot of ways to keep us tied to the greater Boston area, um, to other schools. We have big traditions um, like the Boston Marathon where that runs right in front of campus. So we are tied um, to our community and to the greater Boston area. However, I think that like small tight knit community is definitely felt through those smaller size classes, the student based discussion. Um, and that I think kind of brings the best of both worlds together. Awesome, yeah. Um, somebody else is wondering, is it manageable to maintain your academic studies along with clubs, sports, and other organizations? Um, I definitely say so. And I think that's one of the first things you need to figure out when you get to college, um, learning how to balance your extracurriculars and learning how to balance your academics. Um, of course, my mother always tells me academics come first. So like, I am very big on academics. Like I'll have my Google calendar, 
um, set up with the times of my classes, times I want to study, um, and then I also have time set aside for me. Um, I'm also a student, like I get involved with a lot on campus, like I'm probably in like five or so other clubs besides SAP and I still able to manage um, like my grades and um, my time. I know that sounded like a little bit of a, a subtle flex, but like I promise it's not. Um, but yeah, you can totally manage your time here at BC. And I think being able to balance academics and extracurriculars is kind of what combines to make the college experience. So um, definitely make sure you're on top of your time when you come to college. Yeah, thank you. And just one thing that I want to touch upon is like in college, it's much different than like much more different than high school in that you can control every aspect of your time and pick your schedule. So like if you're wondering about an average, like you can work around different organizations or if you're going to be an athlete, the sports and everything. So like, for example, tomorrow, my first class is until 3 p.m. So I have my whole morning to like it, let, if I want to study, I can study. If I'm going to work my job, I can go work. Um, you can really build it around it. And I know the faculty um, and professors are very accommodating. If you are an athlete, you have a little form that you bring to them and they'll be like, OK, we'll work outside of the classroom or whatever you need to kind of get you caught up. Um, somebody else is wondering about cafeterias on campus. How many are there and are there diverse food selections? Yes, I don't know exactly how many, but I know it's more than 10. And there are three main dining halls on campus, um, lower dining hall, and there's one on campus, and then there's obviously one on Newton campus. But I think I would definitely say that there's a diverse selection on campus, especially just because there are so many dining halls. If you're ever tired of a specific one, you can always just do take a five minute walk and go to another dining hall and find something else to eat. And I think something else that's really cool is that sometimes BC Dining will do, will do these cultural dining nights where they'll kind of put like these white tablecloths out and then they'll do like a specific fair. Like I know one time it was like seafood night and there were like lobsters and everything. And it was really funny, like going into the cafeteria and just watching people like eat like a whole lobster, but definitely a fun part of the experience. And food is definitely an important part of the college experience. Yeah, awesome. So we have three questions so we, we can work through them. But I do feel like it would, it would probably be inappropriate us to go through this hour session and not touch upon COVID. And so Christian, or Christiana is asking, how have your college experiences in regards to traditions and events have been impacted by COVID? Um, I was pretty apprehensive coming into this year, especially with COVID. Um, but I'm living in an eight man suite this year. So I feel like the seven of my roommates keep me plenty um, entertained. I think they're all characters and we all get to know each other a little bit more now that we have to spend a little more time in the dorm together. Um, but there's still like, even though there is COVID, we do have some sort of like, we're not always cooped up in our rooms. Like we can go outside with a mask and like sit on grass and talk and like have a little picnic or like lay down in a hammock. Like those things you can still do um, during COVID. Um, I think those are things we love doing before COVID and we can still do them during COVID and we'll do them after COVID. So um, definitely there are a few things that like we can't go to tailgates anymore, but we all still watch the games on our TVs in our suites. So. Yeah, and with that, just really quickly, I think people are becoming more creative. Um, for example, this last football game that we had, my friends and I actually sat right outside of Alumni Stadium, which is where we would normally play. And you could hear like, all the music going on and you could hear it. So it's almost like we were there, we were just so close. Um, so we're just trying to become kind of creative and inventive with our ideas. Yeah, awesome. All right, home stretch. Um, Kai is wondering about undergraduate research opportunities at BC. How are they provided? I touched on this a little bit in my introduction, but um, I'd say the best way to get involved in research is to reach out to professors. Um, some Professors may mention it in your class, but if you don't have a class with them, uh, you could find a lot of information about the research that professors are doing on their websites. I literally found out about uh, Professor Brinton Likes by just doing research on that professor. I went into kind of the Lynch School, looked at the list of professors, looked at the research they were doing, and I was like, oh, this looks cool. Send an email um, to set up a time to chat. And from there, it was super easy. I'd say professors are really willing to work with students and to kind of help give them that opportunity. And that starts in freshman year, really. Awesome, thank you. All right, so unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get to all these questions, but I'm gonna ask one last question that I'm gonna have everybody answer. Um, 
to the to the questions that we're not going to get a chance to answer or if you're feeling a little shy all of our emails are on the screen and i'm actually about to put up a slide while everybody answers these last questions with all of our contact info so you can feel free to reach out and we'll be talk um but to wrap up what is your favorite memory here at boston college i know hard question I can go first. I think definitely one of my favorite memories, I don't know if this counts because technically I was off campus, but um, I, through the Heights, I was able to photograph Hosier in concert in the city of Boston. It's definitely something that I never imagined myself doing before I came to BC, but it's just something through getting involved and kind of networking and being a part of the heist that I was able to, and I went with like one of our arts writers and we got two press passes and it was just a really cool, surreal experience to be able to go to a concert for free, but then also photograph it. And it's just definitely one of my favorite memories so far. I think mine has to be my first um, football tailgate. I think walking down from upper campus, it was like a slow, like, it was almost like a, I was in a, a Netflix original, the way I was walking down and like, I, I looked over the garage and I saw a sea of people and like, I'm here, like I'm at BC, like, let's do this. And then I went down the elevator and there's just so many people and like you're walking around, um, you see your friends, like you see faculty, like you see everyone. Um, there's, there's just such a happy spirit that's there that I think um, that I'll always remember. I think for me, it was um, the weekend or the Sunday right after Thanksgiving break. Uh, everyone was coming back. It was one of the first big snow days, which for me was a big deal. I had seen snow before, but being from Florida, never got to play in snow really. So as everyone was coming back, I was outside with my friends for about three hours having snowball fights, building snowmen, kind of sledding down. And it just felt like I was a part of the community for sure. And the fact that I missed my friends after only being gone a week was, I think, really um telling about the kind of community that is built so quickly. I have 31 favorite memories uh, and, and it's commencement day. Commencement is just such a special day. You know, you see the, the throngs of students in their gowns, you know, and faculty in their colorful robes and everyone's smiling, right? Everyone's happy. Of course, a lot of the students are kind of sleepy because they stay up overnight, you know, overnight to watch the final sunset coming down the garage. But, but you could tell, you know, just the sheer happiness of the students, of the faculty, of the, of the family of the students. It's just such a great way to culminate the school year. All right, and I'm gonna end with mine. Um, so mine was actually my sophomore year. It was college game day. We were playing Clemson, who at the time I think was ranked number one. Um, and we were getting destroyed, to be honest with you. <laughs> but basically it was, I think early in the third quarter, we were all kind of like sticking with it because it was the night football game, drinking some hot chocolate. Um, but Clemson went to do a uh, punt. They went to punt the ball. And one of, our, one of our special teams guys tipped it. And Michael Walker, who's now in the NFL, but caught it and returned it for a touchdown. And at that moment, like everything went wild. I thought the stadium was going to collapse, um, but we scored a touchdown. It was an amazing moment. I like will remember the feeling of the bench bouncing, feeling like I was on a trampoline. Um, but as I mentioned also earlier, I'm an environmental studies major. And so I was in a seismology class the next day, um, which is study of earthquakes, if you don't know. And the professor, Alan Kafka, who's a great guy, um, has some seismographs set up across campus. And he told me that at that time that the touchdown was scored, they registered it as a low grade earthquake on campus, um, which shows you how enthusiastic BC is about its sports, I guess. But um, with that, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. I'd like to thank our amazing panelists for taking time out of their busy schedules to answer some of your questions. Um, this is the final one or open house series specifically for the Ahana experience, but we have a special session next week on the 13th at 8 p.m., which is just gonna be with admissions counselors. So the people are actually gonna be reading your applications and they're gonna be there to answer your questions and kind of guide you through these this final home stretch towards your uh, submitting your actual application. So definitely look forward to that. Um, our contact information is on the screen. If somebody said something that you wanna hear more about, 
Um, this event is also part of the virtual web series. So if you want to go to more, if you want to see some past recorded ones, you can all check that out on the BC admissions website. But um, with that, thank you for coming.